Hi guys. So this past April, my partner and I went on a two week long road trip through Northern Italy. Italy has long been on my bucket list of countries to visit and the stars kind of aligned for a trip this year. We decided to camp nearly the entire time rather than rent hotels and we rented a little Fiat 500, which sadly I didn't get any footage of. The main purpose of the trip was to do a ton of hiking and rock climbing, so we brought our own gear and pretty much chose our destinations around where had good rock climbing. The trip was mainly broken into four parts. Finale Liguri, a rock climbing haven near the sea. Then Cinque Terre, a string of centuries old seaside villages in one of the most picturesque places I've ever been. And then Arco, another beautiful climbing destination. And finally, we ended the trip at the Italian Dolomites, which is the insanely majestic mountain range in northern Italy. Since this vlog is ASMR style, it'll be a bit long, probably a little rambly, but I hope that you enjoy. Let's start from the beginning. We flew into Milan and spent the day there. We only stayed for one night, but we checked out the Duomo, a huge gothic cathedral, and the Galleria Vittorio Emanuel II. Basically the prettiest shopping plaza you've ever seen. Something that always impresses me about Europe is that just about any city you're in is full of beautiful ancient architecture and designs, with some even being kind of hidden away. We rented the car the next day, picked up a friend of ours who would be traveling the first leg of the trip with us, and hit the road. Honestly, I fell in love with this little Fiat and kind of wanted to buy one for the States. <laughs> it fit the three of us comfortably, plus luggage, and fit through all those tiny Italian alleyways like a dream. So Finale Liguri is a seaside commune in the Gulf of Genoa, and it's considered one of the best spots in Europe for rock climbing. I will be pronouncing a lot of these Italian names wrong, so forgive me. It's got these beautiful limestone mountains that, once you hike up, have these incredible views of both the ocean and the valley. I don't have a ton of footage of us rock climbing, which is mainly what we did there, because I was stuck on belay duty the whole time, but it was incredible. The most memorable climb was this one called Grotta del Ladera, which was this giant, like, hollow column at the top of the mountain that had a ton of beautiful sport routes. And another cool thing that was to enter the area, you had to climb up through a pitch black cave using ropes, so the approach was nearly as cool as the climb itself, though it did make me feel a little claustrophobic.
Of course, when we weren't climbing, we were enjoying the ocean, though it was too cold to swim, drinking Aperol spritz, and checking out the town. One of the evenings, we even popped into Nice, France for dinner because it was only an hour drive away. That's another thing that blows my mind about Europe, is that all the countries are relatively close to each other. I really fell in love with Nice, maybe because it was such a short time we were there, but it was just so peaceful and lovely. We went to a cafe, got dinner, and just walked around in the rain. Also, something to note is that camping in Europe is really different from camping in the US or Mexico. It's a lot cushier usually with bathrooms, hot showers, sometimes a pool and a bar. This one in Finale Liguri even provided breakfast for us. After a few days in Finale Liguri, we said goodbye to our friend and drove to Cinque Terre. The drive was long and winding, but still super nice. We booked a surprisingly affordable hotel in one of the towns called Vernazza. Vernazza, Vernazza, Vernazza. Each of the five towns has its own character, which was pretty neat. We weren't there in the high season, so thankfully the town wasn't nearly as crowded as I heard it gets. We had no climbing planned for this part of the trip, mainly because if you do the famous hiking trail that connects all the five villages, it's actually a pretty intense hike full of a lot of stairs. Of course, the first thing we did when we got there was get gelato. <laughs> and that first night, we decided to do an impromptu sunset boat tour, which was so worth it. It was super cool seeing all of the villages from the sea in a totally new perspective. The sunset and color of the water was so magical. The captain gave us some food and a glass of champagne as well, which we enjoyed while watching the seagulls glide by our boat. The next day was the big hike. We started in Vernaza and made our way to Monteroso, the village to the north of us. Along the way, we learned that part of the trail was closed so we decided to take the train that connects all five villages to the southernmost village, Rio Magore, and then hike back to Vernaza from there, going through Manarola and Corniglia. I took so much footage of the hike because it was just so pretty. Since part of the shoreline trail was closed, we had to hike back up into the mountain using a wilderness trail and then back down to the shore for part of the journey. I had heard that this area was usually crawling with tourists, so I expected the hike to not be a true hike in the sense that you are away from civilization and other people and in nature, but in the end, we had the trail mostly to ourselves the whole time.
It was so incredible walking above lemon trees and vineyards, with the trail sometimes turning inward into forests and streams. At every little town we stopped in, we enjoyed it and walked around and ate food there. Speaking of food, we ate so much good food on this trip, though I really didn't get much footage of that, unfortunately. Obviously, the pasta was incredible, and so was the seafood, but Alex and I aren't huge foodies, so we budgeted pretty little for eating out. It was a lot of 5 euro focaccia, to be honest. All in all, I enjoyed this part of the trip way more than I thought I would, and I highly recommend going during a shoulder season if possible. However, the reason it's a shoulder season is that it rains more often, and our last day there was pretty gloomy. We decided to head northwest to Arco a little bit early. We stopped in Verona to eat lunch, saw Juliet's famous balcony, but quickly left because the city was just full of people. <laughs> we got to Arco in the evening, set up camp, and bought some groceries to eat for that night and the next. Arco was, again, a huge climbing destination, not just in Italy, but all of Europe. It's a favorite of Adam Andra, and we saw his face in all of the guidebooks. Arco is a pretty small town situated in a gorgeous valley next to Lago de Garda, a large lake with a few larger towns around it. Arco itself was pretty small. While we did get to climb and hike in Arco, the weather was pretty touch and go the whole time. However, the views from the top of the hikes were amazing. Again, not much footage of us climbing, but the first two days, we spent wandering around the limestone cliffs, rotating between climbing and hiding from the rain. Our last day, we ended up spending exploring the towns around the lake, including Riva del Garda. We rented a bike because the trail around the lake was supposed to be an amazing bike ride, and it did not disappoint. Along the way, we ate at a lemon-themed restaurant, and it was probably my favorite restaurant during the trip. I ate the food too quickly to get a video, but here's what the dessert looked like. On around the 10th day in Italy, we started making our way to the Dolomites. Side note, I'm always impressed by just how many medieval buildings and castles are just scattered across the whole continent. It felt like we saw one every 30 minutes along the road trip. So, as we drove north, we knew we were truly in the off-season for visiting. Normally, it's late summer that people go to the Dolomites, and the gondolas take people up and down the mountains. You can stay in little huts as you do the multi-day hikes. The trails are full of people, and the weather is beautiful. We got pretty much the exact opposite of that. As soon as we arrived, it was rainy, foggy, and snow was still on the ground. You could barely see the famous mountain ranges. The gondolas and huts were closed, and the towns were ghost towns. Nevertheless, the first two days we were determined to do a few hikes. All of the peaks of the mountains were closed due to snow, but we weren't really looking for mountaineering either way, so the day hikes ended up being perfect. It was so 
quiet. We literally saw only one other person on the trail the entire time we were in the Dolomites. It was a little surreal. By the third day, we were considering leaving the Dolomites early and heading to Venice when the weather finally cleared up. The last two days in the Dolomites were considerably sunnier, and we finally saw the peaks of the mountains. The longest hike we did had an incredible view of the whole region, but a lot of the trail was buried under the snow. So we did get lost for like 45 minutes. During the hikes, we actually saw a ton of frogs and alpine newts, which was super fun. We could also tell that we missed the wildflowers blooming by only a week or two, but seeing all the buds coming out of the snow was really nice. Also, fun fact, we talked with some of the locals around the area and learned that they speak a language called Latin, which is older than Italian, technically, and pretty much only found in this region of the Dolomites. final day, we had to drive back to Milan to make our early flight the next day. Of course, this was the day with the most perfect weather, but oh well, that's how travel goes sometimes. It did make the drive back really nice though. Our last night in Italy, in Milan, we were pooped, so we returned the car, wandered around the neighborhood that our Airbnb was in, and just passed out. Guys, this trip made me want to move to Italy so bad. I really fell in love with it. I studied abroad in Germany, and I've been to France and Switzerland before, though only briefly, and of course it was lovely. The vibe of the people here was just so warm, and the nature was amazing. The road trip aspect was also super nice, being able to stop for coffee or lunch in any city we wanted to, really taking our time, including Parma, Verona, Genoa, including some very small towns where literally no one spoke English. It was just so nice. And I was surprised at how much my Spanish helped me understand and read Italian. I will definitely be coming back, especially to do the Dolomites the quote-unquote proper way. So thank you guys so much for joining me on this little ASMR vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I may continue to do these as I travel because it was a lot of fun and a really cool way to re-experience a trip by making this little vlog. You should definitely leave a comment on where I should go next. I'm seriously eyeing Vietnam, Peru, or Brazil right now. So love you guys and until